Dear colleagues and friends, welcome to Prelude, an interview series about opera produced by Atelier d'Excellence for educational purposes. The current episode is supported by Opera Wire. Francisco Salazar, publisher of Opera Wire, joins today the panel of interviewers. Welcome, Francisco. Thank you, Ari. Our honorable guest, our honorable guest for today's Prelude is one of the most complete artists of the world operatic stage, internationally acclaimed soprano, Miss Nino Machaidze. Welcome, welcome, Nino. We are very happy to have you with us today. Hi, hello. I'm happy too, and thank you for your invitation. Our pleasure. I would like also to present Mr. Sami Boyd Ladla, AD Creative Director, and we are going to have today also Ricardo Estrada, the maestro, uh, AD, artistic consultant, who disappeared for a while due to technical reasons, I guess, <laughs> but he's going to join us soon. Uh, and uh, Sunny Boy, what do you suggest? Shall we go to the second question for Nino? Because Ricardo is not here to start with his question. Yes, I, yes, I think so. <laughs> <laughs> or welcome, maybe Nino. I can. Thank you so much for your time. <laughs> I think Ricardo is Thank here, you. so let's give Thank him you. a second. We apologize to Nino and the audience for this. 
but on the world of the internet, these things happen, unfortunately. Ricardo, you are back. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know what happened. I, I, I'm in a hotel here in Madrid, and I don't know. They sat down. I don't know what they did. Now it's, it's OK, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We already pre presented you to the public, and we are looking very much forward to hear your very first question for uh, Nino. OK, it's an honor to start this interview with a wonderful artist as Nino. It is. Uh, first of all, I start uh, uh, previous my, my first question. I will I will love to to ask you what do you feel being here in our country here in Spain? You are in Madrid. How is treating Madrid to you? <laughs> so um, it's absolutely wonderful. First of all, I have to say that I am in love, completely in love with Spain, and uh, of course with Madrid. And incredibly coincidence that I it, it I think it nice to say that I've been here uh, exactly seven years ago and exactly seven years ago my first kid Alessandro uh, was four months old and uh, our trip in Madrid was his first uh, trip with a flight and everything and now I'm here after seven years with my baby girl Elena and she's also four months old so oh, wow. <laughs> that's amazing <laughs> I think but then incredible. what do you need how many possibilities was there i mean <laughs> so i wanted to ask you where, where when are you going to come to barcelona because you know i'm from barcelona um <laughs> so yeah. that means that then you will have your third baby maybe when coming again <laughs> <laughs> Ricardo, you are too bold. <laughs> well, I say, um, uh, boy and girl, and uh, I always wanted two kids. It was like my dream. And now that, thanks God, I have two kids and boy and girl, I think I'm happy like this. So, <laughs> oh, fantastic. <laughs> That's it. Okay. Well, never, never say, never say, never. I was I about tell to say you... that. <laughs> For experience, <laughs> never say never. <laughs> you never know the future. <laughs> so yes, I know Madrid and uh, with Spain, and it's so nice after such difficult year uh, with pandemic yeah. and everybody closed home and everything closed and like mm, the situation was so sad and also seeing the cities empty was so sad. And now I have to say that seeing the the Madrid full of life. And I have to say more than Milano because I mean I've been I've been there before coming here and uh, was not like that. Yeah. Here it's more love and it's wonderful to see that all the restaurants are open and of course also it's important that everybody is protecting and with the masks and um, also very important that opera house is open and they are doing everything in a, such a professional way because we are tested twice a week yeah. the, and this is very important this is very important to keep open things but still uh, with the, in the safe way and the protecting and uh, you know this is this is very, very important I'm happy to see all this life we need this yeah, yeah, it's a very live city, of course. I really love it also. Um, so my question, my question uh, is yeah. how and when you decide to um, make, I mean, to be a singer, because I know that you were studying uh, so young in Tbilisi and you were studying also piano, brava. Uh, you were yeah. studying also flute, bravissima. So, yeah. so <laughs> what was the thing that, uh, you, I don't know, that, Came to you, came to you in order to say, no, I want to be a singer or, or I love to sing. How was? So, um, first of all, I think it's very interesting to say that in Georgia we have a very, very big uh, musical tradition. And so, are not musicians, uh, they still try to give musical advice to, to their kids. And so almost everybody, um, I, I hope that also now it's this, but when I was a kid, for sure was like that. So um, 
So still they 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 were bringing kids in the old school uh, and to play piano or violino or um, some instrument just to take musical education. But in my case was also, I mean, it was difficult to not see what I really wanted to do in my life <laughs> because actually <laughs> since I was like five or six, I remember that I was like no stopping singing. It was like I think it disturbing for everybody because like I was like singing all the time <laughs> and sometimes I remember that my brother was like please can you just not sing for five minutes and I was like no <laughs> so, <laughs> even my no was sing sound so I think sometimes you really understand when you have some talent on your on the front you know a kid with the talent like when some kid is you know that it has like painting and painting in, a, in a such beautiful way and you can understand that that kid has that talent so in my case um fortunately my mother and my father they saw that i had this kind of talent so i was just singing 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 whole time and uh, repeating and um so it's why um of course from the beginning they brought me to to play piano because it was too soon to sing but then uh, when I was eight years old and I remember my piano teacher there was a little problem that when I was playing some notes that I was not playing I was singing so, so I remember that he was saying like no these things you have to still play why are you singing and I was like but it's much better no so I, I had this problem actually it was like and so I remember that he told uh, to my mother and he said like I think it's a time I mean you don't have to wait anymore I think this kid is she's ready to sing so why you don't change the door and just you know go go to ask to the door next door because there is a um, vocal uh, teacher so so like this uh, we changed the class <laughs> And I was eight years old when I started to sing uh, opera. So really, opera. Um, I've never been in a choral and a kid choral or something. No, like right like this. Uh, I started to to study opera, and my first piece on stage that I did with piano was Oscar Salia from Balonga. So <laughs> I was only eight. So. I think it was very easy to understand that I had to sing. So this is <laughs> nice. <laughs> you have mute the. I don't oh. hear you. Yeah. No. Now. Yeah. Now you can hear me. Yes. I just wanted to tell about Georgia that this country has some magic element and produces so many great singers. We previously had uh, George Kaknidis and Ketevan Kemokiewicz and now we have you. Uh, what is the element that in this country that helps uh, young people turn to culture, turn to opera? Is there something that uh, helps in the tradition of your country? Excuse me, I, did, I didn't heard very well the, the question. Can you hear me better now? We still have problems. Yeah, I think. It's better. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry for this. I, I asked, I said that uh, Georgia has a magic element and produces so many great opera singers. We previously hosted George Gakmidze, Ketevan and now we have you. Uh, what is the special uh, element in the culture and the tradition of this country that helps young people turn to opera and gives them the opportunity also to start a career in this field? So, uh, I think it's something that I think we have some... Uh... Can you hear me? I can hear you. We have some, some you small... But, uh... Is it any better? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to know if you hear me because I lost you before. I'm sorry for this. It's my connection probably. But I can hear you very well. I can hear you well. Okay. 
Oh, so I, I mean, I, I think we have something in our blog because like all country, they are just, everybody are singing. <laughs> it's, it's incredible. It's incredible, really. Because also, if you go in Georgia, you will see this, that, uh, for example, there is a party, okay, and uh, like birthday party or something, and we all like 20 people around the table, and everybody are eating. One person takes guitar, and uh, everybody, then everybody, so it's just it's just incredible and also i think this, this that um uh, you can start to learn uh, music in such young age because there are existing the schools that where you can go and you can start already musical and opera serious opera education at that age you know it, it's very helpful because growing up already on stage and already with a serious education and also um, in a conservatory uh, they have a, a studio that a studio and I remember that we were performing like uh, um, acts from opera. we did like four acts of Rigoletto I remember and all you all whole opera. So this is very, mm -hmm. very, very, very good, uh, this, this kind of, um, this way of teaching, let's say like this, because we are growing up not only in the class, but already on so this is very important. Thank you very much, Nino, and thank you, Ricardo. Um, if, I hope you can hear me well now. I hope I resolved my issue <laughs> with the sound. Perfect. Great. Perfect, very clear. So, so since we spoke for Georgia, that was a very important chapter of your life, certainly because you were born there and took the first lessons and made the first steps. But uh, also the rest of the beginning of your career is like a fairy tale story because you found your, yourself very quickly, just at your 21 years, uh, you found yourself from, from Tbilisi at the Academia del Teatro La Scala. And very soon after this, you covered Gilda at Teatro La Scala, and you also sang a dress rehearsal next to Leo Nucci. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. uh, did, did you ever feel, feel sorry, overwhelmed in front of such a, cha a challenge? Because you were still a kid, you were very young. How did you face this challenge and uh, how did your years in the academia in Italy prepare you for your international breakthrough afterwards? Yeah, so that, this, is, this is a good question because everybody I think that, of course, uh, such a challenge and such a, a huge stage, you know, and, uh, and important opera house can scale. And of course it can be. But in my case, it was not like this. Because, probably because um, that was exactly what I wanted. It was exactly what I always dreamed. So my desire to uh, do things in the right way, to do things well to success to finally keep that opportunity you know and uh, that desire was such big that then there was no place you know to be there was no place um, scared i was not scared let's say like this in uh, in easy way and um, first of all i was not scared because technically i was ready and this, I have to say that this is very, very important because um, somebody can think that, um, yeah, technique, okay, yeah, but by, by goodness, goodness, it will be fine. Okay, but you have goodness only if technically you are right, if technically you are safe, strong. Only after that, you can go on stage and you can be happy because if technically you are not um, strong, okay, and you don't feel that you have strong technique, you will never be happy on stage because it will be too scary, too scary. And so when I arrived from, from Georgia, I already had my technique. I, I was completely uh, sure about what I was doing. I was about absolutely sure about my technique. It was very solid 
and is the exactly the same one and now I never changed. And uh, then I always dreamed to go in Italy. I always dreamed to sing uh, on stage of La Scala. And uh, when that opportunity came, I said like, oh my God, this is really happening. So now, now I will just do what I know to do. I will go on stage. And you know, Rigoletto I already had um, had done in Georgia, so it was not my debut, let's say. Of course, it was debut in La Scala, but I feel like this part fits me perfectly, so it's nothing to be here. Okay, so I'm here, and uh, just I will I will try to do my best, and um, and yeah, this is what I always dream. So I just have to be happy. So yeah, honestly, I was not scared. I was just happy. <laughs> And about and about Academia of Scala, uh, um, I I I think I become an artist in that academy because, as I said, I came in Italy and I already had very safe and very strong technique. Um, but as I was super young, uh, probably um, you know the interpretation, the all that to understand also the style of uh, Bel Canto or Verismo or Rossini or, you know, or Mozart. Okay. All these kind of stuff, uh, I didn't know. And so uh, with the help of Leila Genscher, especially Leila Genscher, because I will always be thankful to her because she really taught me how to become an artist. And, uh, she, uh, and I understood from her that there is a difference between uh, being singer and between being an artist. And I think in, in Academia of La Scala, I become an artist. So I will be always... That's happy. really, that's really great you. to hear that you were so sure about yourself and that yeah. this security comes out of knowledge and good preparation. It's a very good advice for our audience and our singers who are here today. Awesome. Sunny boy, <laughs> since uh, since you, you you I mean uh, you kind of covered my question, but as well, um, I want on the question that I was about to ask, it was about your your debut of jumping in in Salzburg at the last minute. What was the situation? If you can just take it through, were you ready to sing the role? What was going on in your mind, and what is your advice to young singers who are um, who might have the opportunity when the opportunity comes? What is your advice to them? And also as well, just to talk about teachers because you touch about uh, Leila Gencha as well. I wanted to know, were you always with one teacher your whole life? And what, what was your, 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 your state in terms of having a person who was guiding you throughout your career? So I will answer first the last part of the question. Yes. <laughs> I, I have still the same technique that I had since I was eight years old. Mm -hmm. I never, because for me, this technique now, it's so solid. And, uh, and this technique uh, gives me the possibility always to go on stage happy. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, I just never changed because there was no, it was not needed. And, uh, and also, fortunately, I've been lucky also as well um, that when I was inside of Academy of La Scala, um, we had um, uh, Luciana Sen, and she was teaching us technique, but she liked me very much. And she, so she, she, she just, uh, she was happy. And so we were studying and it was very um, natural and uh, nothing changed So in my technique, let's say. This. And this was very, very good. And I've been very happy because I've never been confused. And uh, this is because I always say also to my students, when you find your way, when you find the way of technique where you feel sure, where you feel comfortable, when you keep singing and you feel healthy, and when you feel that voice is healthy and fresh, and sounds perfectly. And you can finish the opera, long opera, and you can start again. This means that you have a good technique. So don't change it. It's not necessary to change only because you are growing up or because um, for curiosity. 
because that kind of thing can just can confuse you. Absolutely. And confusion is never a good thing on stage because fall you will get tired mentally as well because stage is not easy place and it's a huge challenge every single time. So you really have to be convinced on what are you doing, when you are doing, where you are sending the work. How so only after this you will be happy, as I said already. So when carry, we don't. And uh, because it was not necessary, I never. Mm. This about me and my. I will be always grateful. God of yes, and and I was her first. So we like grow up together. Oh, that's awesome. I was twenty seven, and I was eight. So. <laughs> oh wow. And, yeah. Now she is absolutely the best teacher in the whole and absolutely. I sent her deep love. Yeah. And then the next, you said you, what was the uh, It was, it was about the, the Juliet at Zalsberg Festival. Yes. So, Juliet, so, um, I remember I was in Russia and I was singing Janice Kiki. And after Janice Kiki, um, they came, the direction from Facebook, and they came and they said like, oh, okay, um, I we, we find out next Juliet. I was like, okay. And they said, um, so do you want to be our Juliet? Are you ready? And I was like, I didn't know the part at all. Okay, I only knew the Je veux vivre. That there was something that I always found. And okay. But because they said like, okay, we found our next Juliet. So you want to be our Juliet? And uh, um, are, you, are you ready? And I was like, of course. <laughs> I said, like, of course I'm ready. Here, when we start rehearsal, in two weeks, I'm so I said I'm ready, and I was I was completely sure that it was the right decision because when that kind of opportunity comes, I mean, you really have to show are ready, and because I knew that. Uh, Aria was so perfect for me. And of course, I knew the opera, I heard the whole opera. So I knew that um, as it was written, it was not too heavy or it was not uh, Durandot. So <laughs> it's why I was sure that that ball uh, was going to sweet me. And I said, yes. In two weeks, I will be there and I will know the role. And, 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 I, and I remember the day after I went to the uh, uh, in Duomo in Milano, I took the score and uh, like I spent two weeks of 20 hour, 24 hours a day learning that role. And, uh, and I did. And I arrived there and, and I knew. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> To, of course, of course, um, uh, young like advice to young uh, singers. No, mm. you never have to accept when you are not sure about uh, the very important thing that if the opera is good for vocal cords, for your vocal cords or not. This, of course, you don't have to do. Never, 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 because really. Uh, a wrong role can really damage our vocal. So this is very important to know. And uh, it's very important to not accept when something you know is bigger than you. Uh, bigger than you, I mean that it's, it, you are not ready, yeah. okay? Yeah. And uh, you have to accept, you have to be uh, like I did. You have to do like, like I did. Only when you know, when you are sure that that role will be perfect for you. And I knew this. I also have like some strange sense, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> but I always feel uh, when something will be right for me and I always feel when something will be wrong for me. So until now, thanks God, <laughs> and it's already, already, so I, in my debut, I was sick and now I am 38 so in all these years I never made mistake in a role 
So never, never, never. And I have to say that um, while after, after I did the Lombardi in Monte Carlo, you one, one month ago, mm. okay, I started receiving uh, um, proposals from very important opera houses uh, for very dramatical operas. And I'm just refusing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so oh, I know, I know that um, that will be uh, the reason why I will not go back in that opera houses uh, for a uh, for a few years. But it's, it's totally okay because the most important thing only the roles that with our vocal cords perfectly and never accept more difficult, more difficult, let's say more dramatic, okay, roles that can be damaging. So I, I never do this because I love this job too much. Yeah. And I love singing hang on stage just too much. So I will not I will not not accept something that I know that it's not for, good for me just because I want to see, uh, some to go back in some yeah. very important opera houses. So this is very important uh, for young uh, singers. Never accept some, something because somebody told you or somebody is insisting or just because you want to think in uh, some very important opera. No, accept it only if you are sure that it's perfect for you. Wow, that is so profound, my God. And, you know, we work with singers on a daily basis. And this is often mostly a, a question that is getting asked, that we are being asked. What do I say? Yes, but I need money. But I need, but coming from a person who is out there saying this information, it is absolutely so, so encouraging and really just to learn to say no if something is not right for you is so important to hear it from somebody like you who's in a business who started to at a young age and you already knew from the beginning what was right for you i think that's so profound and yeah. our singers um, i'm sure they are taking notes <laughs> no because it's very important it's very important to know to say yes when it, when the opportunity is there and uh, yeah not lose the opportunity because you are scared because you don't know the role because you think that you you don't have time no 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 yeah. no no no. you will use 24 hours you will learn it so okay, this is very because that kind of opportunities cannot come back anymore yeah okay so this is very important to the moment okay but well, it's very important to know to say no because that kind of thing can damage, can be the last one, last that you will do. So why? Yeah. It's, it's very, very, it's very important to think, to think that um, to decide, if, you know, to know what you want to do. You want to sing only for year, or you want to sing for twenty? Years? Okay. Yeah. Absolutely. I do have a question about about saying no and then saying yes, because a lot of times singers, they start with a certain repertoire and then they get boxed into that, that certain repertoire. So, you know, if you're a soprano, you'll be singing Traviata and more Traviatas and they won't let you do anything else. At what point do you say no to those Traviatas and how do you move on to more diverse repertoire? I mean, you've, you've sung such a range um, and you've been you've been given that opportunity, but a lot of singers they only get traviatas, for example, or Don Giovanni's, but they don't move from there. How how do you how, what do you do there? So um, this is this is very very interesting question. And the thing is that the mistake, let's say like this, is not um, uh, to what you do anymore because you are singing too many traviatas. Probably it was wrong to accept traviata very soon. It's why very very important to go slowly and to not uh, do some roles right from the beginning. Few roles they 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 need to be like. They, you, they need that you to arrive to that role. You can't stop 
heart with dead balls. Okay, for example, I waited to do traviata until I was 30. And I remember that I was asked to do traviata since I was 24. But I was saying no, 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 no. Because there is thousand things that I can do before traviata. Traviata, it has to be the road I will arrive. But I don't want to start with traviata. This is because if you do this, you know, in our journey, uh, the message that you give, okay, opera directors, they, they receive that message. So if you give the message that you are singing lyrical roles, but you are too young for that roles, and you know that you are too young for that roles, but still, if you give that message that you are ready, they will give you that role, and you will sing once, and you will sing twice. And if you will sing in the right way, the good way, then everybody will ask you traviata. And so there is no way to go out. And so sometimes you have to refuse also because you know that that very hard and lyrical dramatic role, you will sing in the right way, okay? And then you know that everybody will ask you again and again and again and again, and again that role. Okay, you will be not able to refuse anymore. So this is don't accept the roles like Traviata too soon. Think the things before. Okay, start with the more. Let's say if you are lyrico leggero, start start with Elisir d'Amore, Don Pasquale. So like this, you will grow up in a beautiful way. Okay, and then you will arrive. But you start with that, then nobody will ask you any more again. And so this means that you just jump one step. This is. So it's always better to go step by step, step by step. And the, the why, I, when I said that I'm not accepting the two, two lyrical, dramatical roles that now I'm asked to, it's not because. I'm worried that I will be in a beautiful, in a beautiful way that was. No, I'm worried then if I will accept that role and I will in a beautiful way that was, then nobody will give me any more Luisa Miller. Nobody will give me any more Rossini, for example, and also Carriata or Mimi, because I will give the message that now I'm lyrical drama. So this is, I don't want to give that message. And so it's why I'm not accepting that was. That's it. So would you say having a plan and knowing exactly which, which direction you want to take is, is important, especially for the young singers, you know, uh, we were just talking to a very, so, so talented soprano. And then she kept on mentioning um, uh, 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 bigger roles than she's supposed to do. And we were like, oh, but you do, Susanna, or you do, Musetta. And she's like, oh, no, but I want to try Countess. I want to try, we're like, so we find ourselves in a position where we don't know what to say and how to say, because we don't want to interfere with what the teacher is doing and the singer is is wishing to do. What do you then say in that situation with that, with, that, with those kind of students? And also, I guess my question was, is it important to have a group of people that are there to guide you to the right direction? And also the singer should have a vision where and how the career should go. So, you know, this is very important to, we always have to listen to ourselves, listen to our body, because our body gives us messages. And I always, always, always tell to my students, why you arrived so late to me? what you were doing in the last three years, why you arrive at that point. I that, hmm? almost without voice. So I mean, when you when you sing, okay, and you are singing uh, one aria, okay, and you finish and you feel good. This is message that that aria is good for you. If teacher will give you some other aria like, and you sing that aria and you finish and you are without voice completely. So this means that that one is not good for 
tell you. So why you have to think that the other day and the second time? Refuse. Don't do it anymore. And also, also, also about the teachers. Um, unfortunately, unfortunately, lot of young fingers, they don't understand when they are hurting themselves. And they are studying and studying with the same person for months and for years until they are have very big. So it's important to understand before everything becomes dramatic. When you finish and you feel tired vocally, okay, this means that something wrong was, or you were not supporting with diaphragm, you were not breathing enough, or you were pushing, you were screaming, or you weren't singing in a low position. There was a lot of things that can be wrong, okay? And then everything will went in a bad way. So, about choosing recovery, we just have to listen our body, what our body says. And when we think something, we feel good. And when we think something, other, other things, we feel bad. That's it. This is so when you feel good, think things. Don't don't think that one person can get everything. It's impossible. It's just impossible. That's it. Thank you very much, Nino. Thank you, and Sunny Boy. Uh, Nino, you have performed uh, with remarkable success on the greatest stages of the world on both sides of the Atlantic, as we say, from uh, your singing home, as you call it, the Teatro La Scala, where everything started from, to LA Opera, San Francisco Opera, the Metropolitan Opera of New York. Uh, do you find any differences between working uh, in Europe and in the United States? And uh, do you have some uh, preferable theaters that you wish to sing at? I won't tell you. I won't ask you which is your favorite one because I know that you love a lot of them. So, would you like to share with us about the circumstances in one of those places, each one of those places, and uh, then about the theaters that you like singing at? Yeah. So, oh, how this happened actually? But Los Angeles Opera become one one opera house that is always in my heart. It's like, um, I can say that it's my favorite because it will be like, I will like, I will offend the others because I mean, I, I love a lot of opera houses and the people work. But yeah, but let's say the um, Los Angeles Opera has like special place in my, in my heart. And uh, about the audience, um, the thing that I noticed, I remember, that um, when when I when I sing when we sing uh, comical operas in United States, they just laugh so much. They 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 really they are really having fun, lot of fun in United States. This doesn't happen in every European opera house. I don't know why. But uh, sometimes in, in Europe, it's more difficult to make audience uh, laugh. <laughs> I don't know why, but this is, this is, this is like this. Um, sometimes yes, but sometimes no. And, and I remember that the same production that I did in the United States and then I did in Europe, I remember that in the same point in the United States, they were laughing like crazy whole time. And, and in Europe, no. So I don't know why, but I mean, of course, it's not like this every every time. But but what the thing that I saw that, uh, yeah, uh, in United States, they like more comical operas. And probably in Europe, they like more serious operas. This is my sensation. I don't know. But I think it's, it's like that. Very nice. About the working conditions are, are a little bit different how the theatres uh, handle the situations and uh, create the schedules, the, the circumstances of the work in anything, in the working conditions. Is it easier or similar? I don't think that it's different. I mean, it's, it's, it's beautiful. When, 
some opera houses just have such incredibly teams working inside, you know, so yeah, it's just, uh, let's say the opera house, it's anyway, it's a magical place, but few ones are more magical than others. But anyway, um, I don't think that there is a differences between working way, no, this, no. Thank you very much. Well, wow, I, I am just so uh, amused for all the experiences you had. <laughs> and Nino, you know, when we had a conversation, actually, I think this this would be a very appropriate question for our for our singers. When we had our conversation, you talked about the role that you're currently doing now, learning it in like I think you had two weeks. And I just wanted to ask you a specific question. What tips can you give our young singers to memorize a school? And also um, about languages. We, we also talk about languages. What is is it important for the singers to to learn the languages to speak the languages? I seem to ask this question all the time because when we had our conversation, it, you had a lot to say, and which is which was so interesting and so helpful. And so I wanted to just you to share it today with us as well. Yeah. Um, so I think uh, I'm just lucky <laughs> because, <laughs> because yeah, I just learned the role in in just incredibly fast in a absolutely in two weeks i can memorize like 500 pages that i think it's crazy my husband says that i'm not normal so <laughs> i agree with him <laughs> probably I'm, uh, probably you all are right and i'm not normal i know somebody <laughs> So um, um, it's why I like to make all these debuts because, you know, uh, there was also one year I remember that I did nine new roles. Nine. Oh, yeah, it was record. It was crazy, I know. But yeah, I did. Um, and about, um, I can say the way I, I uh, study. So first of all, when opening new, I always like to choose a um, good recording and to listen from the beginning to the end. And this because um, it's very important to have the total idea of opera, the music, hmm? how arias are made and duets and uh, concertato and everything. It's very important because if you just open the score and start or only studying like this without knowing how is the music, it will take just too long time. It's impossible. Hmm? So I always take a beautiful recording and I like to listen, like, let's say twice. Hmm? I will listen from the beginning to the end to have the total idea of what's going on. <laughs> and yeah. then, and then I start studying. I always study alone. I never go with the pianist uh, to start uh, studying from the beginning, no. I go and um, I meet pianist only when, Ricardo, I'm sorry, I know, but I... <laughs> and uh, I go, I go when I know the role, okay? So, and I'm when I'm ready to sing from the beginning to the end, like, and uh, what I do is, first of all, I like to mark my, you know, I love it. That process is the top. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to mark everything with a marker and uh, yellow. And then um, it's very important to uh, understand what is written because um, you don't have to just memorize. It will take too long time only memorizing without knowing what phrase means, okay, and what meaning, meaning, let's say like this, okay? Mm -hmm. So if you know meaning, it's, it's faster. So yeah. it's why, it's why the next question that you say that if it's important to speak many different languages, yes. Let's say, um, I don't know how many, <laughs> but let's say Italian for, I think I'm almost convinced about this, that an opera singer 
had to know Italian because because um, I mean most of operas are in Italian. Of course, if if you sing this kind of my repertoire, let's say like this, I don't speak about Wagner, of course. Um, but yeah, you know, Italian it's very important. So exactly, and also right after it will be also easier because if you speak Italian, okay, and if you know what are you singing, also you will already be able to interpret it. And, and it will not be like, uh, let's say like this, first of all, I have to memorize and then I will be interpreting. No, it will be already all together. Yeah. You will memorize but you will memorize already knowing what you are memorizing so this is very very important to know what are you saying and to not memorizing without knowing what you have what are you saying because sometimes i have to say to my students you you know what are you saying yes and i see on face that it's not like that and so i can hear this because because they are not interpreting so it's why i say like okay now i tell you what are you, what are you saying you think they are thinking in a different way right in one sentence. so i see how big is the difference when you know and when you don't know so this is this is let's say i first of all i listen and then i open score and i start with piano of course because I, as Ricardo say, said, I also was playing piano and I also was playing flauto, flute. So uh, that, that also helped me because the, the school that I was doing when, um, with flauto, it was more difficult than the school that I was doing with, uh, with vocal, with singing, because I was doing two schools. So it's why I, I was doing giving all the exams in flauto school and then I was just bringing uh, the results in the <laughs> because it was difficult. So it's why um, uh, when you know solfeggio, let's say like this, I don't know how it's solfeggio in English. How is solfeggio? It's, it's, it's Tony, it's Tony Sof. It's Tony Sof, I think. Am okay. I right? But, no, I think no. I think the sol solfez, the French word, is quite international. The solfez, the French yeah, one. It's so, Maestro. It's only solfez in English, I think. So if you know that very well, you will for sure you will be able to study alone, and the uh, study process will be also faster. Yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Thank you very much, uh, Fran Francisco. Would you like to? Uh, back to your question about the transition in repertoire. Of course, I think we spoke a little bit about about um, when to say no, when to say yes. Um, but your repertoire is very varied. Um, you sing everything from Donizetti to Rossini, and as you said, you just did Lombardi, Luisa Miller, Traviata. Um, what are the keys to maintaining a healthy voice while doing all of this variation of repertoire? And another thing that goes thrown around a lot is fuck. Um, and what do you think that the idea of Fox sometimes pigeonholes singers into performing a limited repertoire and not exploring possibilities? So, um, I think the, the most, and the, um, let's say the, the most uh, important word, and for um, not word, but the way uh, to keep your voice healthy in a different, different repertoires is everything with your voice so this is you have to adjust your voice uh, on uh, uh, not adjust adapt to the repertoire that you are singing just because you are singing critical dramatical role you don't have to start pushing and screaming and making voice bigger and heavier and rounder no you have to sing with if you sing Rossini, you don't have to make your voice lighter and small to do all that. No, 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 no. You have to sing with your voice. Yeah. So every everything, everything you have to sing with your voice. And if you will sing with your voice, your voice will be healthy. 
This is exactly what I do. If I in Grossini, and if I am able to pass in a few weeks from Rossini to Verdi to Puccini and to come back to Donizetti and to go again with Rossini and Verdi and Puccini, and it's only because I always sing with my voice. I never make fake, let's say. Hmm? I never adapt my voice in a fake way to the repertoire that I'm singing in. This is very, very, very important because like that, only like that you will be able to change repertoires very often and also to be able to sing such different repertoires very often. And also, um, I think it's good to, I mean, if this is exactly what I do. So um, actually, I, for me, it's diffi difficult to understand, uh, uh, for example, that they, they choose to sing only, only one direction, you know, because, because I'm so curious and, uh, and I like to discover new things. And I like to discover myself also in new things. So it's why um, I'm not cutting myself from something because no, 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 that no, that other style. But the style we can always learn how to sing bel canto. We can learn what we can do in bel canto and what we can do in bel canto. We, what we have to do in Rossini and what is completely out of style. But all these things, it, it, it's possible to learn. So not just because you don't know how to do, you have to not. And, you know, so I think it's always good to vary, to, to, to try to, yeah, to go out from and to try to discover it's I think it's also funny otherwise I mean if I if I I remember that one one year um, I had like five or six contracts of Elisir d'Amore and I remember that after that year I don't wanted to sing Elisir d'Amore never again <laughs> because I don't like no way I am not going to sing this opera never again because I, I was like ah! I was getting crazy uh, so it's why you know because I I like to variate I like to study and add and now um, I have already 37 uh, big uh, important roles in my repertoire so I think it's it's a lot but because well, because I like I like to add and uh, discover and also to make myself in a challenge. I like challenges. It's it's interesting. <laughs> I, I just want to add one thing. Um, I mean, because as, as young students, they're taught that they are either a lyric soprano or a lyric mezzo or a dramatic soprano. How does a young student go about exploring that repertoire if they don't, if, if their teacher is telling them you're a lyric soprano, you will only sing lyric soprano. You'll never sing a Tosca or let's say a Turandot for, for like, how does, how do they go about that? Yeah, this is very difficult. This is very difficult. Um, the only thing that I can say that happened to me, and then maybe somebody can follow my example, that maybe will be good because it's important to not be scared okay and i remember i tell you now um until until i went to conservatory i had my teacher no to the biasami that i know i nominated before then i arrived to the conservatory and before going in conservatory i already was solist in our opera house it's a beautiful Tbilisi opera house it's a gorgeous opera house huge one i was already solist there i was already singing there uh, many important and the main roles. I I was already winner of all the competitions that I did, and uh, this just to, for example, eh? and uh, and also I did uh, a recital before going to the conservatory um, exam, 
and I did all Lucia, Sonnambula, Puritani, and everything. I was 17. Then I arrived to the conservatory, and my teacher, unfortunately, she was not teaching in conservatory that period because she was still too young. And uh, um, they gave me a teacher. Okay, and I went to the first lesson. After one hour that I was uh, doing this uh, lesson, I finished that I was completely without voice. And that thing never and never happened with me before. Never. Because the, the, the way she was trying to, she was telling me to do things, it was completely opposite of what I was doing. Okay, she was telling me, okay, you have to push low. Oh, this, you know, and, and, and because she was telling, I mean, I was doing, I was 17. And I was just doing, I was following my new teacher because in my opinion, in conservatory, you know, it was great. So I had to grow up still. And of course I had to learn. I was not arrogant. Okay. I was open to learn more. And so what she was telling me, I was doing that. And after one hour, I went out and I was completely, completely without voice. And I remember what I did exactly in that second. I went to the director of conservatory. Okay. Doc, doc, doc. Can I come, please? Ah, Nino, come, of course. And I said, or you will change my teacher right now, or I will never come back in conservatory anymore. I said, I will never go back to her. I'm so. I'm without voice. And this never happened with me. So, or you will change or please cut out. I will, I don't need conservatory. Okay. I was feeling much better before. So, or you will change now or anyway, I will not go back to her anymore. So you decide. Okay. But or like this or nothing. Can you hear me? Is there, yes, yes, very well. Yeah. Yeah. You were frozen for a second. Oh, and, uh, and so um, they changed my teacher. And then, they, they, then I went to other teacher and he was a tenor and, uh, and it was wonderful. So this is the, why I said this story. You don't have to be scared to say when you feel bad. You don't have to be scared. When you feel bad, you just have to refuse. You have to say, I'm sorry, I'm not going to do this again because I don't feel healthy. That's it. And I remember that I did this. I said, I will never go back with her anymore. I'm sorry. I don't need your conservatory if I have to lose my voice here. And they changed. And then I studied there and I was happy because the, my next teacher that was tenor, he was wonderful. So this is, it's not easy. It's not easy to refuse. It's not easy to be, you know, like this with the teacher. But if, if the alternative is to lose your voice, you have to. Absolutely. You are life proof that uh, a career comes not only because of talent, but needs also strong personality and diplomacy and many other virtues except talent. Yeah, I think Maestro maybe. Estrada, we need to hear your voice, I think. Not I think, mm, I'm sure. No, I, but, I have to vocalize a little bit before. Frozen? No, you're yeah. here. Okay. I'm here, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm vocalizing. <laughs> Wait, no, no. I was, I was very, very, very attent um, with a big, amazing attention listening to Nino. That um, of course we need. I mean, we know everyone that she is a great singer, but now we see also that, that she is a great maestra also because uh, she said things that uh, to me are very obvious, but uh, 
to a lot of singers or to uh, the new generations or people trying to to enter in the market let's say it seems it's not as as if you are a dramatic voice you don't need to be pushing all the time or screaming uh, as a mad i mean the orchestration many 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 times in this kind of operas are is very not so so tough is not so density so you you can see pianos it is, is very true also the importance of the words of course it helps as she, you, you said that uh, it helps if, if you know the the language of course because then you you can give a lot of colors i mean it's not a it's not a matter that you sing from the beginning to the end one opera Okay, very good, complimenting. Um, you can do this mathematically while you're a singer, see? But the difference is, what are you telling to us with this music the composer wrote? So it's something that has to come from you, uh, this, the, the, the idea, the intention that you have to find in the words. Then this, it gives an amazing high difference in your interpretation. You go to this, to, to this, no? Although you sing everything. so. This is very important. This is very important. Also, another idea you, you, you gave, Nino, very interesting. Uh, I always remember, of course, have not uh, Cavalier, of course. She was telling all, all uh, their students, um, please, please, first you have to sing the areas, sing the areas. If you feel that it goes to you, if you feel that you can sell yourself, if you see that it matches to your aim, to your energy, to your everything, then study the whole opera. But if you feel that it's not going in a, in a way, whatever, whatever, I mean, you can see it, but you don't feel, then yeah. leave it, leave it, leave it, absolutely. Because there is a huge repertoire you can sing for sure, no? And um, yeah, this is, this. I mean, well, we, we think that maybe this is a very logical thought, but um, there are little people that has to go in this idea, no? And it's not it's not it's not easy, of course. You you had you had an, well you have an amazing career, and then you 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 live these things every day, and you you know perfectly this. But for the uh, young people, sometimes they want to sing this repertoire because someone told you or they feel that they are lyricals or it's a general lyric, I have to sing this. <laughs> well, well, try. But if you if you don't feel, don't do it. I mean, go to yeah, another thing. Because, because, because at the end, we are going on stage. So nobody can force you to sing something yes. if you don't want to sing. Because at the end, you have to go on stage and you have to put your face there and your voice and it will be you performing. And so at the end, the most important are us. We have to decide what we want to do and what we want to do. Somebody can suggest, somebody can say, no, you will be wonderful. But you have to decide if you will be wonderful. Because then you have to go on stage. <laughs> That's Absolutely. It. It's, this, it's this. It's this. So it's this. Yeah. So my question, because I talk a lot always. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Spanish. I cannot. <laughs> so, uh, well, I think the Spanish and, 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 and Georgian people, we are very close. Very, very, very close. Same, same. <laughs> very same. Okay. Uh, my question, well, my question is, um, which singers... Uh, are a little bit your references which singers you were uh, listening when you were young you still are young of course but when you, you were a little bit younger <laughs> and you were starting your career um, which singers for you I don't know how to say it, 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 it they, they open a word or, or some ideas that then you, you keep it in your career I know you always in a way you keep on mind and uh, they helped you to, to be the singer you are. Joan Sutherland. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Always her. It's like, I don't know. I just love her. <laughs> I just love her so much. And um, yeah, I always search for her recordings. It's something mm -hmm. that I just, I just love her. I just love her so much. So nice. it's short, sure, but... <laughs> it's, it's, it's <laughs> <there>. <laughs> so you are very selective <laughs> this <Yes>. one <laughs> yes. 
to 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 add on that question, if you don't mind, um, you've been, you, you've sung with so many singers, of course, all the big names. I mean, we can count the the list is endless. Which colleague did you f f had like a special moment with on stage? Would you a special moment? What what special moment do you remember that still remains with you today on stage with a colleague? Um, there is no only one. There is no <laughs> only one. But maybe Leon. Because uh, I remember then um, I was doing one of my first uh, Rigolettos. Uh, no, no, I mean, first Rigoletto in Europe, okay? And in the past, we did in past uh, Rigoletto. This, this wonderful recording that there, there is also on YouTube, and I love it. I love it, I love it, I love it. And um, I remember that uh, at the end, um, in finale, Okay, I was singing and uh, I remember that I was crying because it was so moving, you know, this uh, last yes. girl, it's yeah. such a moving moment. And I remember that at the end of opera, okay, he, he saw me and he said, you were crying? And I said, yes. And he said, wow. He said, you are a real artist and i i i remember because because you know um this kind of words can somebody can think that um yeah uh, yeah of course and uh but when you, are, you know and you are doing one of the most important place because you know doing rigoletto verdi in verdi opera festival in parma yeah the, and and I remember um, I remember that moment very like a, a special one because such person telling me such thing in in such occasion you know it, it was it, so this I can, I can say many but this is the yeah. first that I remember and um, I did they say that was one that was one of course I mean I I, I was lucky. Because, as I said, for me also, um, what what I always try on stage, you know, always when I'm on stage, I'm always trying to give some emotion, you know. And I, the best compliment for me is when um, members of audience they come and say, "Oh my God, I had goosebumps." Yeah. Yeah. And I was crying, and I was moved, and all these things for me are the most, most, most important because yeah. this means that what I was feeling. Because sometimes I move, I'm I'm moving on stage, and I really have to be careful because in some very dramatical moments and touching moments, also for me, um, you know, um, I have to careful and I remember that in that moment I had to be careful because as you know my mother she is not alive anymore she is not with us since 17 years and uh, you know and singing that phrase for me it was so moving mm -hmm. you know going in cello and mother and everything yeah. and I remember I was crying and and also that when he said I it was it was just so moving and uh, it's very important when you feel something and you give that feeling and that emotions also to the audience and also to the colleagues and when they, when they understand. This is very important. So it means that it was not only, let's say, uh, interpretation because you have to interpret it. Yeah, yeah. But it was real. It was something that you felt and yeah. everybody saw. And uh, for me, this is more important. And it's not, it's not going on stage and making the lesson of uh, how, you know, how good you sing. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know? Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. No, I think nobody cares. Like, yeah. I mean, when I, I, I'm in the audience and when I see some colleagues and they are singing and they are trying to do the 
you know, to, to know to show that uh, their technique is so great and Galaratura and everything and nothing is coming. I'm like, okay, bravissima, ma give me something. <laughs> because I have feeling that I'm on the lesson of uh, good singing. <laughs> yeah. So this is right when singing, you know? So uh, yeah. for me, it's not, not, uh, not interesting. And, um, yeah. and it's why I always try to give my heart yeah. and put on stage to yeah. for for a more for you know because audience they come to the theater because they they are searching for some uh strong emotions yeah and i must say to, and we have to give them that emotions because they are coming for that and they yeah. they want that and the opera is magical and we are so lucky to 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 be inside yeah it's I so must say, wonderful. I, I love this job. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, seriously, Nino, I wanted just to compliment you really. Everything you do on stage come across. I was very lucky to listen. I was sitting right next to your face on stage okay. in Veron when you did Rosina <laughs> with my son Luigi. And then he did the anchor as well. It was spectacular. So everything you say, it really comes across in stage. I just wanted to compliment you on that. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Maria and uh, Nino, I, I don't know. Can you hear me? Because I had a small uh, yeah, yeah. frozen moment yeah. from my side. <laughs> it's a bit problematic today. So we will pass from the artistic life. We will touch a bit the personal part of your life. Uh, you are a wife and the mother of a young child and the baby, your baby Elena. And I would like to ask you also on behalf of many female singers who are agonizing about how to maintain a work-life balance. How do you manage to maintain a work-life balance in your uh, uh, everyday living? And uh, what are the challenges of being an international artist and a mother? So the, the most important word is calm. <laughs> <laughs> This is the most important thing. And to manage everything with calm. <laughs> so, this is very important. So, um, you know, um, as I said from the beginning, I always wanted two kids, no? So I always wanted to have a family. And uh, um, and I feel so grateful that life gave me that uh, this opportunity to be mother. And, um, and yeah. Um, also, already pro, from the first, it's easier, I have to say, because I already know what I have to do. But I remember with Alessandro, uh, of course, I was studying to how to manage, what to do. But still, um, I was, I was like, I was calm because I was saying, I want this, I wanted this, and. Thanks God, I have this. So now it's nothing impossible. So let's just choose for the right ways how to manage all this. And so um, also, also I think um, I'm lucky also because exactly like Alessandro, also Elena, they are um, very good kids. They are not crying before, for no reason let's say like this you know they are not capriccioso i don't know how is capriccioso in uh, in english uh, capricious yeah. Capri yeah they are not doing capricious <laughs> they are cry only if they are hungry <laughs> or, or or they have to sleep <laughs> oh in that case they are really crying okay but in that two cases and so and also because um i'm not a um, such person that says no, I can't, I'm tired, um, I can't do this, it's too difficult. I'm not that kind of person, okay? I'm completely opposite. I'm like, yes, I can do it, I'm strong, I'm not tired. Even when I'm tired, I'm saying that I'm not tired. And, uh, and, and, and I, I need to do, uh, you know, also, also, Elena was one week and I already started to do online lessons. 
because I don't want to leave my students alone for long period. Okay, and I remember that I was asking to my mother, mother-in-law, like, can you help me? And to my babysitter, like, can you help me? And also to my husband, like, can you walk, please, with Elena? And I do this lesson. And I have a very, I think, good way to organize things. You know, I, I, I do like... <laughs> my brain never stops thinking. Never. It's like... <laughs> whole day and of course it's not easy because i remember um i traveled with alessandro for six years until he went to the school all around the world uh, alone because also my husband he was working he couldn't come with me and uh, with alessandro i don't wanted to bring a babysitter with me and so i was finding the babysitter in the places where I was arriving and the opera houses, um, very, many of them, they help us because they know people that uh, uh, can help us. So I was traveling alone and uh, of course it was not easy, but still because um, I was so happy to be, to the, that I was mother and also I was in good shape and I was able to sing that I was not refusing just because it was not easy. Okay, and I was saying, yes, it's difficult, but it's not impossible. So I have to do. If something is not impossible, you don't have to not do because it's difficult. So, of course, it's not easy, but I, I, I know how to manage. I know how to manage. I'm outside. It's why, for example, I'm not accepting many interviews. I'm not accepting live interviews with the TV that I, I receive from Georgian TV every day, um, requests for interviews, live interviews, or, um, you know, uh, the but I know that that kind of things will bring my time from my kids. So it's why if I'm working, uh, I do not accept them kind of things because I know that that time I can use for them. So it's everything about organization, let's say. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's so beautiful and it's so wonderful uh, when you finish singing and then you go home. Uh, you have waiting and uh, it's just so amazing. And also, also body, I think our body uh, learns and um, now, since Elena is in burn, I mean, I'm sleeping five hours a night, hour, let's say like this, but I'm totally okay. <laughs> so, because body uh, knows that it's okay, you can survive and feel good and uh, it's not necessary more. <laughs> so, but, you know, it's, it's just so wonderful that um, I always say you don't have to uh, sacrifice family for career. Because uh, because Ariana is wonderful and it's a successful singer and it's all to be to to be loved and to receive a lot of flowers and uh, brava and uh, everything. But then uh, when you will all the I think uh, you know all the things will be not there anymore. Uh, then you will feel alone. So it's why since I was a kid, I said, like, I want to sing, I want to travel, I want to be a successful opera singer, I want to be a diva. Mm. But I would like to have a family kids because the real um, reason of life and the uh, sense of our life are our kids. So everything, everything else is secondary, let's say like this. And, uh, that is really precious. It's really precious, precious what you say. is nothing on success as mother that you can have. It's, it's really cool. <laughs> it's really beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. It's really precious what you said and uh, it touches me deeply personally. <laughs> Thank you. Maestro, it's your turn again. Again. 
So <laughs> I, I, was <laughs> <laughs> I know very well this that you were telling about organization yeah. with kids. <laughs> Sometimes it's like crazy. You don't know, I but know. you are right. You find a way, always you find a way. And um, I always say that the human being, we have a capacity, ability to adapt to every circumstance amazingly. So always, although it will seem very difficult, we find a way to, to manage everything. Yes. 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 <laughs> you know, like, like this. Tick, 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 tick. Then it's easy. Yeah, you know this about this. So my question. So you you told us very clear that I mean you are one of the singers that that says no, <laughs> that is not so easy. It's not I'm so easy. But um proud of but, it. You know, <laughs> but of course, I mean um, it's not easy, but it's good for your career in the long term, let's say in the long distance. Um it, so we know this. I know this, that I mean, you're taking care of all, all your decisions, but I'm asking you, maybe you will tell me in 20 years or in 30 years, I don't know, but which roles you would like to sing? I mean, which roles that you haven't sung just now or, or, or till now? Um, and maybe, maybe, maybe tomorrow, I don't know, but <laughs> you see, did you feel still ready or, or you feel, but, um, which roles you, you, you would like to sing, uh, in the future? Okay. So, um, the one of the many requests that I received after Lombardi, the most of them was for Butterfly. And, mm. and I and there was four different super important like one of the most important opera houses four and I refused because I really think that um, I did for more than 15 years Bel Canto okay and after that I decided that I could move to more lyrical roles because I felt that my voice become more lyrical and now I'm lyrical, okay? And there are still so many beautiful roles to sing before Butterfly, you know? So the thing do is saying, don't accept something that you know, then, then you will be required to sing that role whole time. And I was meaning exactly Butterfly because I'm, I was sure that if I would accept that, then there was no way to go back. Okay, so it's why I refused four of them. And I said, I'm sorry, I will be singing that role. I will be singing that role because I'm in love with that role. Because I, the, the, that role is um, one that, that makes me cry whole time. When I hear butterfly, I cry. It's out of <laughs> It's just like you put an I, I put a cry. And uh, it's exactly why I'm not accepting. Because I really think that now I'm discovering this new repertoire. And I, it's just wrong to sing butterfly tomorrow. So it's why I refuse. But Butterfly will be the role that I will sing, okay? And is the role that I love most and I will be singing. But this will not happen in next three years and four, four years. So I said that we can start planning <laughs> from four years, but not before. <laughs> like, I, I thought when, when, when they had asked you, I thought they were going to say something like Lady Macbeth or like Stifelio or so, like Nabuk so, or something like that. So I, I said, now I'm butterfly and I'm refusing Tosca. Because um, I really think that there are like huge words of opera 
that I can sing now. And I really don't have to sing butterfly. I will be, but not now. And this mm -hmm. because I'm afraid or I think that butterfly is not. No, no, no. It can be for me, but nobody will tell me and propose and give me anymore the roles that I can still sing before butterfly. So this is don't do the step more long than you can, you know, because then there is no way to go back. You are already too forward. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's better to go with calm and discover and the sing and the learn, the have fun and then arrive and of course about it. Well, thank you so much, Nino. My God, you you've touched so many, so many uh, good uh, points. So I'm gonna go to the last question, which is: uh, We all um, have been struggling with this COVID thing that has been going on. Thank God, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. Finally, the opera houses are opening. Even here in Germany, they just announced that uh, we're gonna be singing with an audience, which is great. But Going back a little bit to the tough times for all the singers, uh, how did you deal with the cancellations of the contracts? And as well, what would be your advice to the young singers who are pursuing this career as we've been through this darkness? And what would be your advice to them as well? Yeah, so for sure it's a very difficult times. And um, um, I had COVID, but thanks God um, with no symptoms. I was pregnant. And um, I discovered that I had <laughs> during my pregnancy with the uh, uh, blood test. I've been I've been a uh, lucky one, let's say. Like. But of course, it's um, it's dangerous. It's a dangerous uh, thing. And, um, we really have to be careful, and we really have to think first of all on safety and mm -hmm. on health. Um, and this, of course, first of all. But then um, what I see, what, what I saw now, uh, and what I wish that to, to see in all around the world, that after one year without singing, you know, almost one year, with all the contracts canceled, canceled and uh, yes, I was... So, you know, for me, it was not so bad, let's say, this, because fortunately, I, I could stay home and healthy. With me and, but still, I, I, I was lucky enough to go in and to sing One Traviata um, October when I was seven months pregnant. So I still did that Traviata and it was wonderful. Um, but yeah, see all the Operations and uh, we all lost job, and of course it's uh, it's it's so bad. It's just devastating for for so many people, especially for the young singers that they were starting in that moment, and they had their first contracts and they lost them. So it's just so sad and it's it's so bad. And I I'm I I really so understand them. They they are passing and such difficult period because they had opportunity and they lost that opportunity but not that fault you know it's because and it's not there and I really hope that opera houses will they will open again because I see that it's possible to be open and I saw this because um in Monte Carlo, when I did uh, Il Lombardi, one month ago, we had an audience and we were tested every week with a, a test. Okay, and so everything, and we were distanced and um, uh, tested and uh, all, always sanifying and, uh, and also audience, they were distanced. Okay, now I'm here in Madrid and I see the same. We are tested twice 
and we are protecting ourselves and we are singing and rehearsing six hours a day with a mask. Okay, and in, uh, in Monte Carlo we did the same. The first rehearsal where we talk out was when we had to think with the mask. And here will be the same. Okay, but if this is the thing that we have to do to be able to work, and to be able to go on stage, we are open to do, we are happy to do. And of course, sometimes we are completely out of breath because with the mind and moving and jumping and the singing, sometimes we are like, oh, but, but it's okay, it's okay. We still are happy and nobody says nothing because we feel lucky that we are there and we are working and opera is open. So the thing that I would like to add to all the opera house directions, please try to open and test singers, test all the members, okay, and uh, do all the safe things, but open because, I mean, we need to work and young singers, they need to work. They need to have a chance to go, the possible opportunity to go on stage, to start somehow, because if our houses will be closed, we will, so then music will die. Because online, it's not the same. It's just not the same. We all know that it's not the same. And so um, it's very difficult. I know it's, it's just dramatic. It's a dramatic situation. But, but the only way is to go out from this dramatic situation is to have opera houses open. So like this, everything slowly will go back to normal. And we will be able to work, to, to perform. But all the members of the opera house in the backstage, how many people are working, you know, and in and in a, in the Sartoria and everywhere. So this is the life we need that and um, also the technical advice to the young people uh, study 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 and if you have time free time because unfortunately you lost contract and you are not working study new roles okay so like this once every everything will be finished and i really hope and cross fingers that this will be soon because we will be vaccinated and some, one day this will be all finished, okay? Then you will have the roles, few roles that you know that they are perfect for you, they will be ready. And so if you will have opportunity and uh, some theater will ask you, so can you sing this? You will say yes, because you already learned before. So don't lose time. Study, 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 all the time. And also warm up technically. This is very important. Thank you so much. You just reminded me of my thoughts. And I mean, I remember when I met you in Pesa, it was the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, it feels so good to hear those words again. <laughs> yeah. Oh, how sweet. He was so sweet. Yeah. Sorry, we, we just lost, lost Maria. Maria, yeah. I hope she, she has technical <laughs> problems today. It's a, it's a nightmare. No, poor. Maybe we'll wait a little bit until she comes back. So, uh, Nina, what, what, what's next from here? After you finish that production you're doing now, what's next for you? What's, what's, okay. What is planned? I have few recitals. And I have, as you know, now I'm doing also master classes that I like so much. This is like, I didn't know that I liked so much teaching. It's just great. I discovered a new thing. And I, <laughs> and yeah, I just love teaching and I love doing masterclass. I did the first one now a few weeks ago before coming here in Brescia. And now after this, right after I have recitals and then I have also masterclass in Brussels. Yeah. And uh, yes. And then uh, we are now thinking about a very nice project, but it's not uh, still, it's not confirmed, so I can say it. 
But the next one that it's already announced, it's Le Peche du Père at the uh, Théâtre in Naples. And I really hope that um, it will remain scheduled. <laughs> okay, so For sure. <laughs> let's cross <laughs> Let's cross fingers. It's very important. For we, sure. We all need this. We all need this yes. because yes. this is like... And what I saw also um, in uh, in alone that uh, we singers stage, we were so happy and to be on stage to sing. Yeah. And then I was thinking also the faces of the audience and it was incredible because it was half full. Okay, it was half full because they could they could uh, hospitate only half. But they were so happy that they were doing like ovation, like hall was whole, completely full. Oh, wow! <laughs> it was incredible because they, they were so loud and happy that we had feeling that hall was full. So. They also need this. Also, audience, they miss this. So we need, we need. So let's really hope and uh, think positive. Not be positive. Eh? In this in this period, it's not good. But think positive. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Nino. <laughs> Much more with us. That's the best uh, way to end uh, a wonderful conversation. To think. Can you, can you hear me? Yes, yes, Sing. yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, yes we can hear you, my dear. <laughs> it's quite <laughs> tricky tonight. Yes? Yeah. I apologize so much for this. I, it's something we can't control uh, for the inconveniences with the technology, but uh, I said that there is no better way to... Thank you. I said that there is no better way to end a beautiful conversation than to be thinking positively. Absolutely. Uh, and uh, I would like to thank you on behalf of all the AD team for being with us today because we know well that you don't give interviews very often. So it was a special honor and joy. And we believe that you justified perfectly the title we put in this interview, which was that perfection uh, is where great talent meets very hard work and you're a perfect example of this. Thank you so thing. much. <laughs> thank you, thank you. It was my pleasure to, to be here and to talk with you and uh, I wish you success and... Uh, uh, I, still, I still have problems to hear you perfectly, all of you, I'm so sorry. But uh, to Nina before we leave the panel, because my sound is not so good, I wanna, don't want to ruin this. <laughs> my pleasure. It was an honor. It was an honor and a special joy. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It was a, absolutely, I had wonderful time. Thank you so much for very interesting questions. And I hope I answered to all of them. And uh, I also... Thank I you very much. Thank you. Know. We wish you continued success in your life and in your career. I would like also to thank uh, our partners today, Francisco Salazar from Opera Wire for being with us, Sunny Boy Blood Lady, Creative Director, and our great maestro, <laughs> Ricardo Estrada, for helping us. Thank you, maestro. My pleasure. <laughs> thank you to all of you. And thank also to all the followers. And um, thank you so much. Absolutely. It was and uh, we were literally hung. hung. <laughs> Absolutely. We were literally hanging from your lips and we, we were receiving many messages from the people that we, they were doing the same. Uh, you were sharing your advice with uh, such a conviction and uh, strong personality. It was lovely. Thank you for everything. Uh, big thanks to our audience. See you next time at Prelude. In the meanwhile, stay well. A big hug from the AD team and Opera Wire. Ciao. Thank you. Bye-bye. Ciao. Thank you.